Good morning. Today we are going to determine the moment of inertia of a system of particles composed of three masses spinning in a circle. Bobby, could you please read the problem? And Bo, could you please translate? Flippin' physics. Three 20.0 gram masses are 9.4 centimeters from an axis of rotation and rotating at 152 revolutions per minute. Mass 1, mass 2, and mass 3 each equal 20.0 grams. Radius 1, 2, and 3 each equal 9.4 centimeters. And angular velocity of each of them equals 152 RPMs. What is the moment of inertia of the three object system? Moment of inertia, capital I equals question mark. The strings holding the masses are of negligible mass. The strings do not matter, but I don't think we need to write anything down for that. Billy, please solve the problem. Moment of inertia, capital I, equals the sum of all the mass times square of the distance from the axis of rotation expressions, one for each of the masses. So moment of inertia equals mass 1 times R1 squared, plus mass 2 times R2 squared, plus mass 3 times R3 squared. Um, Bo said R was the radius, but it is, it is actually the distance from the axis of rotation, right? Actually, radius and distance from axis of rotation are the same thing in this example, but we need to be really careful. The length of the string forms the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and the radius is the horizontal side of that triangle. Because the distance from the axis of rotation to the object is the radius of the circle described by the revolving object, the radius and R value are the same. But realize, the length of the string is not the same as the radius. So in this example, distance from axis of rotation and radius are the same thing, however, they are not the same as the length of the string. Uh, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so all the masses are the same, so we can replace each mass with m. All the r's are the same, so we can replace each distance from the axis of rotation with r. That means the moment of inertia equals 3 times m r squared. Uh, substituting in numbers gives us 3 times 20 times 9.4 squared, um, which is 5,301.6, or 5,300 with two significant digits, uh, and the units are uh, grams times centimeters squared. That's kind of weird. Thanks, Billy. Mr. P, yes, Bobby? We did not use the angular velocities of the masses. I, I don't get it. Why, why did we not use angular velocity to determine the moment of inertia? Bobby, does the mass of an object depend on the velocity of an object? No, it does not. Then do you see that the moment of inertia of an object does not depend on the angular velocity of the object? In fact, the angular velocity of the object could be zero, it could be not rotating, and it would still have the same moment of inertia, assuming the shape of the object is the same. Okay, that, that makes sense. Moment of inertia does not change depending on angular velocity. But then, why did you include angular velocity in the problem? Two reasons. One was so that you would ask that question. The other was so that we could also determine the rotational kinetic energy of the three revolving masses. Bo, could you please do that? Determine the rotational kinetic energy of the three masses? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Rotational kinetic energy equals one-half moment of inertia times angular velocity squared. So one half times 5,301.6 times 152 squared, or 61,244,083.2, which is 6.1 times 10 to the seventh. And, Bo, what are the units there? Grams centimeters squared times revolutions squared per minute squared. And do those dimensions seem right? No. I thought energy was in joules. Billy, that is correct. Energy is in joules. That means we need everything in base SI units. And angular velocity needs to be in terms of radians. I knew gram centimeters squared were not correct. Actually, Billy, it's not that gram centimeters squared are not right for the dimensions for a moment of inertia. It's just that you typically cannot use non-base SI units to find other values. Bobby, please go back to the beginning of the problem and solve everything again, only this time let's end with joules as our units for rotational kinetic energy. 
Sure. Um, mass equals 20 grams, which we multiply by one kilogram over 1,000 grams to get 0 0.02 kilograms. Radius equals 9.4 centimeters, which we multiply by one meter over 100 centimeters to get 0 0.094 meters. Angular velocity equals 152 revolutions per minute. Multiply by that by one minute over 60 seconds uh, and two pi uh, radians over one revolution to get um, 15.9174 radians per second. Uh, moment of inertia then equals three times 0 0.02 times 0 0.094 squared squared, um, or 0 0.00053016, or 5.3 times 10 to the negative 4 um, kilogram meters squared with two significant digits. Uh, rotational kinetic energy equals 1 half times uh, 0.00053016 times 15.9174 squared which is 0 0.067 uh, or uh, 6.7 times 10 to the negative two with two significant digits joules. Very nice, Bobby. Billy, could you please show that the units for rotational kinetic energy are in fact joules? Sure, the, the units are kilogram meters squared for moment of inertia. Uh, times radian squared over second squared for angular velocity squared. Uh, radians have no units and are a placeholder. Uh, because we do not need them to hold their place here, we can eliminate them, which means we have kilograms times meters squared all divided by second squared. Newtons are kilograms times meters not squared divided by second squared, if, if that helps. Oh, it, it does. Thank you, Bobby. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we can make this into the quantity kilograms times meters divided by second squared all times meters, which is newtons times meters. And newtons times meters are joules. Nice. Yeah. And just for fun, we can multiply our rotational kinetic energy by 1,000 millijoules over one joule to get 67 millijoules for the rotational kinetic energy of our three rotating object system. Also for comparison's sake, if we assume the objects are each roughly one meter above the ground and set the zero line at the ground, each object has about 200 millijoules of gravitational potential energy, which would be converted to translational kinetic energy if they were to fall toward the ground. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.